Thanks for joining me for this video today. This is Dr. Barry Burns with Top Dog Trading, and today I'm going to share with you one of the most powerful Forex trading strategies that, surprisingly, a lot of people don't use. So, as you've heard, you need to have an edge in trading in order to be successful. And I'm going to share with you what I call an invisible edge. And I call it that because, well, a lot of people don't see it because they don't put this stuff on their charts. So, if you put it on your charts and the other person doesn't, then guess what? If you're trading against that person, you'll have what I call an invisible edge. All right, so let's jump right into this. I've done a couple of videos on similar things in the past, and actually, I always ask people to give comments down below or to send a request what they'd like me to do videos on, and this is a request that came in, so here we go. Now, this has to do with the confluence of time and price. So, charts have two... Um, well, two axes on them, right? That's basically it. It's a two-dimensional object. You've got price over here, and you've got time down here. So we have two dimensions. And it's very interesting that very, very few people actually give much weight or have any kind of great timing tool to use on their charts, even though that's 50% of the information. So the key to trading is we want to look for the confluence of not only price levels, but also time zones and where those two come together. So here's how we do it. Go up here to your Fibonacci tool, and we're going to use Fibonacci retracements. Now, that's a price tool, so that's measuring price. And we start down here at a major low, and we go to a major high, and there we go. And so you can see it works out pretty good. This is a common tool a lot of people use. So the market did come down here to the 61.8 Fibonacci level. That's the golden ratio. That's the primary ratio. Goes up to 23.6, put in a little bit of um, a hesitation there, goes back up, and again, that puts in a major low there. And then um, we get all the way back up here, provides resistance, resistance. Okay, so fine, that's great. But that's only one half of the chart. That's the price access, right? It's measuring price levels. And here you can see the actual, whoops, got to take that off of there. <laughs> it measures the actual uh, price at these different levels. Now, these are not the only support resistance levels that can be on a chart. You can be using floor trader pivots, you can be using major swings. So, in full disclosure, um, Fibonacci retracements are not going to catch every single high and low. For example, here's a couple of lows. Didn't really quite make it down to the 23.6. And that's okay. We're not expecting that these are the only support resistance levels that there are. But this is a brief tutorial today, so we're going to just work with these. And if you're interested, I have other videos that talk about other types of support resistance you can use as well. All right, but this one is about the confluence of time and price. So now we're going to go up here and we're going to um, choose Fibonacci time extensions. Now, I did a video on this one as well. It was a separate video, but the request that came in asked me if I would show putting these two together because I mentioned that, but I didn't show that in the previous video. So the way to do this, this measures cycles, by the way. And what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to go from a cycle low here to a cycle low here. All right, now that's, see, this is what we call an impulse move from that low to that high. So that's a strong move up. And then the Fibonacci retracements, we're looking at, okay, which level do we expect the market to stop retracing and go back in the direction of the trend? Well, here's the key. So here's where it was, right? That's the low where it was. So now what we have, interestingly, if you look at that briefly, and in fact, let me take my uh, extra little freehand drawing tools off. What we have is a grid. We have a grid. We have horizontal lines and we have vertical lines. Now, many charts come with evenly spaced horizontal and vertical lines already on the chart. You'll notice I never use those. All my charts are just blank, white space, or if you prefer black, background. But I don't use those evenly spaced horizontal and vertical lines. Why? Because they don't have any meaning for market movement. So take those off and replace them with this grid. 
So now, again, you've got a grid, and you can make these lines lighter if you want to. I actually do usually make them lighter just so they're not so prominent, but uh, that's just a personal choice. In this video, I decided to make them more prominent because that's what we're focused on today. And so now what we're doing is we're looking for, as I said, the convergence of time and price. So we're looking for where the lines come together. So after this low, we can only look forward from there, right? Well, the first vertical line we get is here. And the first time it connects with a horizontal line is here. This is the first time they connect. So if you're looking for a place to buy into the resumption of the trend, well, that would be a perfect place and time. It worked very well. Now, what about an exit? Well, where's the next place that a vertical and a horizontal line mesh? Which, again, these are not just lines. Remember that this is the confluence of Fibonacci time and Fibonacci price levels. Well, it's right here. And so you get a cross of those two lines. And that's great. Great entry, great exit. Okay, now, if you want to find, again, these time levels can still work. Think of these um, vertical lines as time support and time resistance. So here we don't get a confluence of the two, but it's still time for the market to put in a higher low. Here the price level works by itself. Here the time level works by itself. So they will still work by themselves, but the most significant ones are where they converge. Try this, put it on your charts, test it out for yourself, and see if you don't find that this type of grid is much more powerful and more meaningful and actually provides you trading opportunities than just the regular horizontal and vertical lines that are evenly spaced that come on the background of your chart. I think you'll be very, very happy. So if you like this video and you're watching it on YouTube, please click the thumbs up icon below and give a comment that um, helps me get encouraged when I know you guys are responding and engaging and, um, you know, tell me what you liked about the video and also any requests that you might have for future videos. I love creating these videos for you. Also, I'm giving away one of my favorite trade strategies. I call it the rubber band trade. It has a very high win-loss ratio. It's a simple strategy. You can learn it in about 26 short minutes. And you can get that video explaining that trade strategy absolutely free by clicking on the image in the top left corner. Or if you're on a mobile device, click on the little eye with a circle around it at the top right corner of this video. Now, if you're not watching this on YouTube, there is probably a link either below this video or an opt-in form on the side. Anyway, however you decide to... Um, get that uh, free video with my rubber band trade, I would be happy to personally email it to you right after you request it in one of those ways.